The Nigeria Tourism Investors Forum and Exhibition, NTIFE, during its annual flagship tourism conference and exhibition held in Lagos, advocated for a development legislative framework for the tourism sector in Nigeria. FTAN earnestly desires a nationally applicable tourism development legal instrument which respects the rights of the state government to regulate tourism in their domains and at the same time empower the private sector to financially invest in Nigeria's tourism development with consequential powers of administration, standardization and regulation of tourism practice and operations in Nigeria. And now the Director General of Nigeria's Tourism Development Corporation, Folorun Shaw Koka, joins me in the studio. It's good to have you join us, sir. Now, in your assessment, I mean, I know you've been there for two years, um, how robust is Nigeria's tourism potential? Um, based on the absolute numbers of Nigerians, and if you look at the demography, how many 18 to 35 year olds there are, what is the disposable income, what is their digital connection, um, the potential for tourism in Nigeria is huge because you're looking at 65% of the population of 200 million within that age bracket who are the people that make the bulk of the tourists. When people talk about tourism, tourism needs to be defined as a business, number one. It's not leisure, it's not a pastime, it's a business. It's a business of, the, of transportation, hospitality, and entertainment. Individually, those are businesses, and if you group them together, that's where tourism sits. Um, religious tourism, people don't talk about that. But do you know how many people come into Nigeria to pray? Nigeria is a Mecca. It's a Jerusalem in so Africa and beyond. If you look at uh, later on this month, or I think it's the beginning of next month, you've got Pastor Paul's experience at Tafabalewa Square. It is the largest outdoor Pentecostal event in the world. Do you know how many people come here for it? Tourism isn't about little bleeps, little you know, remarks and, and plenty of uh, uh, engineered noise or one event in, in, in some country that uh, becomes, oh, we are the best at tourism. No. The business tourism of a Nigeria, because of the buying power of Nigeria, people come to Nigeria to buy. Nigeria is the Dubai of Sub-Saharan Africa. Because of the volumes we buy at, it doesn't make sense for you to go and buy 10 cartons of this product that you want to sell in a neighboring country. It's cheaper for you to come here and buy it. Oil also makes, up, makes us a business economy. The amount of people that come into Nigeria to work, to meet. So the traditional forms of, of, of tourism have to be redefined. I mean, if you look at our new mediums of cultural expression, the music, the film, the food, the fashion, even our politics, makes Nigeria, whether you like it or not, a tourism country. But how well have we numbers. harnessed those potentials? How much of it has impacted our economy in terms of Naira and Kaba? When people move around, they spend money. When they spend money, certain agencies are supposed to count or, or at least enumerate what the implication of these people in Nigeria are. NTDC is one of them but we have not uh, set up our tourism satellite account yet. Okay. It's something that I set up with the United, uh, Nation, um, United Nations World Tourism Organization, but we have started the process. The National Bureau of uh, Statistics is also charged with giving us those figures. Um, we extrapolate, but I wouldn't like to quote to those figures as of now. Now, again, let's talk about the untapped resources in terms of tourism. I recently, I think last year, uh, late last year, I decided to have, take a road trip with my friends to uh, Akwaibom State, Ikotabasi precisely, and there was a lot of tourism, there was a lot of history just lying fallow. Mm. I, have a, I have a question about maintaining those sites or possible history that would be a form of tourism for whoever is coming, even for those of us who live in Nigeria who are unaware of these things. What is the NTDC doing in that regard? Um, we started, a, when I got in two years ago, we started a program, a, a, a marketing program called Tour Nigeria. Our focus is on domestic tourism. We believe that international tourism, which is just buying an international ticket, can only truly rest on a solid platform of domestic 
tourism assets. If you go to Dubai, all you do is buy an international ticket. Everything you enjoy in Dubai is a solid domestic tourism uh, uh, ecosystem. Now, if we don't have in good state all those segments of the domestic tourism industry, it is difficult to get the international to plug into it. That's one side. In terms of the assets you saw on your way to record it, all those assets don't belong to NTDC. All those assets belong to local governments, state governments, private individuals, the stadiums, the, the beautiful lodges, the caves, the waterfalls. They're not federal government assets. Those assets belong to the states. But if they're lying, we, Father, we, what is the NTDC doing we, to advise? We, 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 we encourage, you must be aware of the Supreme Court judgment against NTDC mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, in terms of uh, the residual uh, uh, list uh, where NTDC's tourism activities are listed. Mm -hmm. I can't, unless I have money and I bring that money to your asset, to bear on your asset, you're not really listening to what I am telling you in terms of advice. You know this environment. But we do, and we have consistently advised, even where our advice has not been requested. For example, the Kano Daba, we have advised extensively on that. Um, Ojude Oba, we're about to start. We are involved in the Ofala in uh, Onicha. Uh, we were at the last festival, and we think the next festival is going to contain a lot more of what NTDC brings to bear. Now, if you look at one of these festivals, or, or, or one of these events, or one of these locations, I just talk about a festival and a, 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 a destination. If you look at the destination like a waterfall, you drive five hours to a waterfall, you see the waterfall. It's not been packaged or produced. The headwaters have been bled, so what is coming off the cliff is just a little trickle. The pool where it goes is muddy, full of you know, things that shouldn't be there. Is there a clean toilet for you to use? Is there a place for you to sit down and have a cold beer? Is there oh, a cold drink? Is there, do you have GSM signal? Because when you don't have GSM signal, you also feel a bit, a bit unsafe. You can't mm -hmm. share where you are, you mm -hmm. can't communicate. Is there a place for you to sit and just observe this waterfall? We don't aggregate tourism assets for people to share. Okay, when you finish at the waterfall, where next? Are you going to just drive through five hours of forest and you, you've seen the waterfall? So we need a bed and breakfast and that stuff is, like that, that. That is just for the uh, uh, destinations. Now, if you look at all our festivals, you've got thousands of people charging around. What is, what is the emergency evacuation policy if something goes wrong? What are the facilities, simple toilets? Who can you speak to in a language that, as a foreigner, you can understand? All those things need to be put in place. They need to be branded for us to digitally market. The mediums of marketing of today is digital. It's not just you know, leaflets at airports. I know you have to ask me another question. <laughs> just one last question, because I have to let you go. Um, so listing all of these things, I, I like it. It's really interesting. It makes me feel that you're the man for the job, but do we see these things happening every other day? You have these interesting ideas. Are they being shared somewhere? Are there people who are commissioned to go into these localities to educate maybe the people in the tourism department, the local tourism department? I mean, what is the plan? Uh, we have six geopolitical offices around Nigeria. And from those six geopolitical offices, we have liaison officers in each state. Our budget last year was uh, four, five hundred and four odd million naira, of which we have about 40% budget performance. That means of the 500 and odd million that was appropriated, we have 40% of it. In 2020, our appropriation is 274 million, which is just, under, just over 50%, of which we don't know what the performance will be. Dubai's success in tourism, apart from all the infrastructure, etc., is marketing. Marketing costs money. A 
you don't invest in, you can invest in the tourism assets and not even market it. Marketing is key, and, and, and it's key in your medium, it's key on the internet, it's key in, in search, paying for search engine optimizations of what you have. Not everybody wants the glitzy Dubai hotels. A lot of people want the off the beaten track, something different, something new. Um, but you've got to push it out there in, in, into the, the, the boxes that they all exist in for, for, for you to make a difference. Okay, uh, one question, and they're insisting I ask you this question. Now, in light of the 2013 Supreme Court judgment between NTDC and Lagos State Government, which stipulates the regulation of uh, tourism services and statutory purview of state governments, has this not limited the supervisory roles hitherto performed by the NDT NTDC? Yes, it has. And we have looked at the law. We, the law that law is 40 years old. You know, you've got Dubai, South Africa, Kenya that we want to compete with. They are amending their laws and their structures, you know, by, by the year. We're sitting down on a 40-year-old law and we want to compete. I mean, you're trying to race a, a 2019 uh, Formula uh, One Ferrari with a 504 from, from, you know, who years ago. That is the only analogy I can bring in. But we have been to Senate, uh, the 8th the Senate, um, try to repeal and enact a new law, a more current law. It's been to the House of Reps, it's been to the presidency. The presidency must look at the interest of tourism in consideration of all the other arms of government. Okay. The president withdrew assent, he did not assent to that bill because it, there were certain conflicts. We have removed those conflicts and it is heading back to the president for assent. Now that law will enable us to behave like a business in terms of marketing Nigeria. We will not be sitting down waiting for federal government allocations for us to do what we want to do. We can then create in, uh, interesting unorthodox uh, uh, baskets of, of financial instruments that can allow us to relate with businesses in a manner that they would be comfortable in.